What's up, guys, and welcome to the first episode of Chartered Territory, uh, one of many, where every week I break down the market's movements to help you navigate with confidence. And today we'll dive into the charts, review the week that's passed, and explore what might be in store for the days ahead. So let's get to it. Before I get started with the first chart, the first trade, the first highlight, if you will, uh, please do note English is not my first language, so I will mess up every now and then. Please do cut me some slack. Don't tear me a new one just because I make uh, a linguistic uh, slip up every now and then. Um, I'm going to try and make this a weekly thing, so I would really appreciate it if you turned back in next week. Uh, this is a new skill I'm trying to develop. It's not easy. I know it's not easy. Um, so things will get better along the way. There's going to be a general outline of this stream. Um, we're going to start off with uh, highlights. Highlights being uh, trades I took and I think are worth, worth mentioning. Uh, obviously, there's going to be trades uh, in the middle where I do not think they're worth mentioning at all. Um, if a loser is a loser of which I can actually learn, uh, and I think you could as well, I will mention losers as well. I do trade every single week. Uh, there are exceptions every now and then. And believe it or not, the first week is an immediate exception. I took longer than expected setting all this up, uh, both hardware wise and uh, just software stuff. I haven't really delved into it much, so it took me a little longer than I, uh, than I uh, thought I needed. Um, so we're up and running now. However, again, did not take any, did not take any uh, um, worthwhile trades uh, the past week. Markets were a little dull as well, if you ask me. So the highlights I'm covering today will be of two weeks ago. Um, but that won't matter that much. Uh, so without further ado, let's just dive right in. And the first chart is Alibaba. Still in this trade. Um, very, very bullish Chinese stock in general. Uh, I did not add this to the um, to the stream. However, I just want to go over this real quick. Uh, give me a second, guys. Give me a second because I do have it here. To me, this is a, a beautiful chart, this CSI 300. We got the potential, and I do mean potential. Everything in trading is, is just probability. I mean, of course, this is an actual double bottom, but we, we won't know that until it is just confirmed and we just don't revisit this, these lows uh, in the near future. But for now, this is, this is a, a double bottom to me. This candle here and this one here closing above this high. To me, this is this is very uh, very bullish. Um, this would definitely be a significant level to me. We have multiple interactions with the level, which, of course, by the way, guys, do note that even though <laughs> trading is a is a funny thing, you know. I mean, if you put a hundred traders in a room and you give them uh, and you give them randomized charts with randomized levels or with random levels drawn onto them and you ask them so what do you think is this level drawn on this chart by a professional trader or are these just random levels most traders most of the time will tell you these are not random levels and they are drawn on there by by professional chartists however we are human beings we are just prone to so many biases and one of them is seeing patterns where there are no patterns. Um, so ju just, it's something to keep in mind. And, and, and when you're trading, always, always remember that um, it, it, it's, it's all just probability. I mean, if you're on the weekly and there's, there's multiple interactions with a level you see, the chances are slightly higher than, no, not a slight, the chances are going to be higher um, that it that it is a level that more people have seen, and that it'll be a level that is going to be respected, uh, or that is going to see interaction uh, in in the future. Um, but even if you draw random levels on a, a on a chart, you're still going to consider them relevant and important. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, however, to me, this does look relevant, and I will try and position uh, long on a retest of this level. 
Uh, however, what you do see many times with actual bottoming structures is that price will just get away from you, uh, offering little to no uh, uh, pullbacks, um, especially with uh, with high volatility um, assets like like crypto. But this is something I'm I'm watching, uh, and this is also why I was very interested in uh, in different Chinese stocks. Uh, one of them being Alibaba. So I actually went long on this close right here, the the weekly close that closed out of this triangle. This is a two year long triangle, which to me is uh, is definitely uh, relevant. The target I have is the size of the triangle extrapolated to uh, here from the uh, from the exit point out of the out of the triangle. So I'm looking to target 138 up to 150. I do have to note that I closed uh, the position partially here at 105 because the um, total profit I had on the position was over 1% of my portfolio. And I do have a rule to at least close some of the position at that particular point. This is, this is just looking really, really good to me. Uh, I will probably add on uh, on a pullback. Same goes for uh, JD. I have JD here as well. This chart is looking incredible to me too. Uh, similar to the uh, to the to the Chinese index, the CSI 300. Uh, also looking to buy a a pullback here, targeting these different highs. Uh, so that was a uh, that was a, is still a a good trade. Then something else entirely. We're gonna go from Alibaba straight up to Popcat. I mean, we're just we're just gonna go for it. Who cares, right? Um, Popcat just. I mean, it looks really, really good. It's just in an, in a continuous uptrend. Um, the meme coin culture is 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 something else. It's um it's uh, something to behold, especially if you're on Twitter. It's pretty funny to uh to uh to see what's going on there. It's it's kind of like cultish behavior, but. You know, if it makes you money, who 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 cares really? I mean, you could be ethically against crypto. You could be ethically against against uh, meme coins, against altcoins because they're high volatility, low uh, market cap. You know, you you can name a thousand different reasons. But um, yeah, as we all know, do you want to be right or do you want to make money? Well, you should choose the latter. Uh, and if a chart looks good to me, I will just I will just trade it. I mean, I usually don't trade extremely low cap coins. Uh, but this is all right. I'm not sure what the what the actual market cap is. So I took uh, this trade here. Um, the reason I took this trade, first of all, if the market is in an, in an uptrend, um, I'm not going to go against the trend. Uh, I will just try and get. I will position long somewhere. The only the only uh, way I will short a, uh, an asset that is in an uptrend. Is if it reaches a, a higher time frame, a resistance resistance level, that is also a good looking short. Um, so if if something just trends up, let's let's see, let's say we get this, we take this high here, and this is just trending up up until this high. I'm not gonna go short just because this is a high. That makes absolutely no sense to me. It's gotta it's gotta be a um, a good position to short, and and I will go over. All the things I look at uh, to position, uh, but I won't right now. I'm just gonna go over this long right here. We got a little cluster of of price action here, and we have this candle here. This candle is important to me because this is a thrust candle that closes through these highs here. This little cluster of um, of price action. Um, what happens then? I wanna I wanna buy a a rounded retest of this level, meaning if the pr the price closes through the level, but then immediately retests it after, uh, I'm not interested in in the trade. So there's got to be at least one candle in between. Well, as you can see, we got a million more candles in between, but the uh, but the retest, and I traded it traded it up until this high here. Uh, so this this was a really good train, uh, five o over five R. Uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time on R. How much R they get? Uh, R meaning a risk reward. 
Um, it is an uh, it is an interesting metric, but it's definitely definitely not the uh, the uh, the end all be all uh, metric to uh, to look at. But it's um, you know it's it's not not unimportant. Um, I'm not going to go over every single stop loss and every single take profit level. Uh, I will say one thing that a stop loss is almost always placed beneath another trust candle, uh, thrust candle, sorry. So uh, I would not put it below this thrust candle here because the distance between the entry and the stop loss would be too uh, small. So what I will sometimes do or do a lot actually is go over the to the hourly and then I put the stop. I think this chart isn't drawn right because I stop below this thrust candle here. But I can't find an immediate thrust candle. I'll just simply just go back over the chart and find the nearest uh, thrust candle to put the stop below. I uh, could have also placed it below this one here. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure I put it right here. Oh, so yeah, this was a uh, this was a good trade. I'm still looking to a uh, long top cut again. Uh, waiting for this trade to play out. We got these highs here, this entire structure. Let me just get rid of this mess. We got the structure building up here, consolidating. Then we have this, you know, clear thrust candle through all these highs. This is an important candle to me. Uh, and then I'm going to look and long the last high before the breakout. Theoretically, this is the last high. Uh, however, what I do note in crypto is that the most obvious levels usually work best. If you're trading FX, um, you, you want to really, you know, nuance your entries, really, really try and squeeze every single pip uh, out of the trade. Uh, but in, in crypto, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's less, it's, everything is less subtle, everything is more extreme, and the more obvious levels usually work uh, best. So I'm in this, uh, I'm in this, uh, uh, I have a buy order set. I'm waiting for this to hit. Um, as we are in price discovery, it's pretty hard to set a, a proper take profit. Um, however, since we are in a channel, you could potentially target the, uh, the high of the channel. Um, again, this is not financial advice. This, you know, if, you, if you're looking at this straight, thinking, oh, I'm going to put in the exact same order, the exact same stop loss, the exact same take profit, you could do that. But I cannot tell you right now in advance how I'm going to manage this trade. I do work with a manual trailing stop loss, um, which I will also use here, um, meaning I could be stopped out somewhere along the middle. Uh, I could... You know, I could even get filled later on, um, uh, look at price action and think, you know, this is looking like absolute shit, and I will just manually close the trade before my stop is hit. I do have data on what would happen to my bottom line if I would never uh, manually close trades and just uh, leave, it at it, leave it as is and only close a trade if my stop loss is hit. Uh, if I do that, I would be losing more money. Uh, usually when I uh, get a feel for a trade and it's not working out and I close my stop manually, uh, it ends up being the right thing to do, uh, meaning it saves me a, a, a whole lot of money. Um, so I can look at, uh, um, at this chart right now and, and tell you how I'm going to manage it. But these are just general concepts of, of what I do and what I'm going to be doing, uh, which you will not do. So please do not just blindly follow this uh, and manage your risk at all times. And we got Shell. Shell was a uh, Shell was a bitch. Shell was being a bitch. Uh, I went short. We got the uh, rectangle here. It's a long rectangle. Started in uh, in April. Uh, broke out. Clearly broke out with the daily close here. Um, and I shorted the retest of um, of the rectangle. So I got short here, uh, got all the way down here, and then we got a huge, a huge, um, a huge bounce, because uh, oil bounces. Obviously, obviously, Shell is an oil company. If the price of oil goes up, the stock of Shell also goes up because the higher the price of oil, 
the more potential profit Shell is standing to make, uh, which is bullish for the stock. However, this is one of the instances where I was stopped out with a manual trailing stop. Uh, my stop was put above this candle here. Because um, I just did, because I didn't want to see it go back all the way uh, and be stopped out of a profitable trade. So uh, yeah, stopped out here, did not hit target, unfortunately. However, I, uh, I actually reshorted re this again. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, this was a, a good trade nonetheless. Uh, not as uh, profitable as I would have won, but uh, good nonetheless. Profit is still profit. Then we have the uh, dollar Canadian. Dollar Canadian was a good trade as well. We got this here. Structure happening. Price action uh, building up. And then we have these two candles. These are uh, obviously, obviously breaking uh, structure. So I got in, sold this level here. You could try and sell this level, um, but that would mean the stop would have to go somewhere around here. Um, and this was pushing it to me. To me, this was just pushing uh, it unnecessarily. Because we got the low here, the low here. I think people would have come in and sold this low as well. Um, so this was already kind of pushing it to me, uh, to my mind. That is why I, uh, I sold this, got the uh, exact level hit, and I traded it down to this low here, which again was a almost 3.5 R trade. Um, so yeah, uh, looking, um, looking good. It was a good trade. Happy with it. Oil, kind of the same as a, a shell, but instead of a, uh, a rectangle, we got the, uh, the big ass symmetrical triangle here. This obvious, look at how obvious this, this candle is right here, guys. You got these lows here, you got this low here, uh, you even got this low right here. Clear, just obvious, obvious, obvious lows on, on, on a chart to, uh, to probably any eye, even the untrained eye could spot these lows. Uh, and then you get this candle, obvious candle, closes through the lows, closes out of the uh, symmetrical triangle. So I uh, took an immediate short position and uh, traded it not to this low, but to these lows here, simply because this is a, a, a this, uh, well, almost four lows, but I would consider this a, a kind of a triple bottom. Not really, I'm just calling it a triple bottom. The reason I don't think it is an actual triple bottom is because there isn't enough time between these bottoms, but there's just, just a triple low, I guess. Um, if I call something a double bottom or a double top or a triple top, there's got to be a significant time between those um, between those candles, uh, because they, if you if there's a yeah if if a bottom forms and like two days later it revisits the pricing and it's I don't consider it a double bottom, but you know to each uh, to each his own. Um, but because there's multiple lows here, even this one here, even these lows here, um, the probability, probability of it revisiting those lows again is higher to me. So I pushed the trade, the trade, um, um, down to these lows and, uh, and got the sell. So this was a, a good trade. Um, then I even reshorted it again, just like I did with, uh, with shell. Uh, however, not reaching target, I wanted to trade it to equal lows. Uh, here, but didn't, did not get it. Uh, I was actually stopped out somewhere around here, I do believe, at a trailing stop. Um, I think I had to stop here above this, above this um, thrust candle, and then obviously got stopped out on this gigantic green dildo. Uh, but yeah, good, good trade nonetheless. Um, what I'm looking at for next week, all right, before we dive into the charts, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Exception. If you trade on chain, you need to try Exception. I mean, we've all been there, trading on MetaMask, Phantom, Dex tools, or really any other Dex wallet, only to have swaps fail or get hit with ridiculous fees. And how great would it be to just set limit orders for any token 
so you can buy the dips or take profits without constantly having to check the market. Imagine going to bed knowing you won't wake up to another coin that dropped 99% cuz you could not set a stop loss or missing out on huge profits cuz you didn't have a take profit order set. And that's where exception steps in. Now look, I've tried plenty of Telegram trading bots and let me just tell you exception stands out. I wouldn't partner with them if I did not believe they were the best in the game. Plus, they share the revenue they earn through fees with holders of their token and traders using their bot. This bot streamlines on-chain trading and makes it so much more efficient, which is exactly what you need in fast-moving markets like these. Check them out using the link in the description below. I'm going to cover a few indices um, because I think the correlation between indices and crypto is um, well something we cannot ignore. Uh, we did get slight pullbacks on different indices that made new all-time highs. We got the DEX, the German index. As you can see, we broke through all-time highs, got the pullback. Uh, could have been a possible bear trap here. Uh, if, if a previous resistance does not turn in support, usually that is a bad sign. Um, got a daily close below previous resistance. Uh, however, the day after we got a, uh, on the Friday, we got a, a good bounce back. Uh, so we still have bullish market structure. This is still looking uh, good to me. Um, the, uh, the FTSE, um, not much to note here. Consolidating below uh, previous all-time high from um, May this year. Um, usually, usually, not always. Consolidation below resistance is a is a bullish sign, but we'll just have to wait and see what this does. Uh, Nasdaq also pushing back to uh, previous all-time highs. We got this beautiful long hammer here. In general, I do not place too much emphasis on individual candlesticks. However, if they are on the weekly, uh, the daily as well, they do mean more to me than on the hourly or on the four hourly, uh, the four hour charts, excuse me. Um, and if they're in a, at, a, at a position that gives us more context, meaning a hammer at the bottom of a chart, means a lot more than a just a... a a random hammer at a random position somewhere in um, in time. Uh, so this is uh, this is looking bullish to me. Uh, a lot of times, what you'll see happen is that the head of a hammer is a great long, and of course, this is hindsight bias. However, in this case, this would have been a uh, a good uh, position to get long at. Not much to know here else. Um, we got the Russell two thousand. The small cap index still very much bullish, uh, just you know, just doing its thing, looking good. We got the uh, 200 daily moving average acting as support, it's still within the channel. This is just bullish. Please do know, guys, and this is very important that bear porn, and I'm gonna ca call it bear porn, is very very popular on on uh, on YouTube. Uh, and by bear porn, I mean just people, usually economists or analysts that don't trade at all, but they do make video content and they will just keep warning you about a crash that's imminent. You know, there's going to there's going to be a crash and you're going to have to be careful and the economy is bad and it's all bearish. and You just have to watch out and uh, go 100 percent cash. But you got to understand there's always and I do mean always there's always a good reason to be bearish not just a reason to be bearish there, there's always a good reason uh, to be bearish however and that is why i trade price only i just trade what price tells me and you should too i i do actually and genuinely uh, believe that um, because there's a, there's a choice to make between trade what actually is or trade what could be and there's just i mean there's there's countless of bears they just keep on missing out on gains and keep on losing money and unnecessary shorts trying to get trying to catch uh the the crash that is, that is going to happen but that just is not yet 
um, please only get bearish once you get confirmation of bearish price action. And there's just none of that right now. There just there just isn't. I mean, look at the uh, the Dow Jones. Um, exact same story. You know, we're we're at all time highs, almost slightly above all time highs. I am long uh, the Dow. I went long after this, this uh, daily close here. This was a confirmed breakout to me, according to my system. Uh, so I did take that trade. However, I'm also long the S&P 500 for the exact same reason. I got long here. Uh, so I have two long positions on the uh, indices. Uh, and as they are correlated pretty much 100%, I have a 50% position on, uh, on both of these uh, indices. Um, yeah. Um, what I'm looking at for next week, uh, a couple of things. I'm looking at Apple, see if we can break out of the, um, out of the structure that is forming here. Uh, it's pushing up um, to uh, all-time highs. Um, so I do believe, especially after one, two, three, four touches, we may be breaking down this resistance and may push out of these and, um, and just keep on, uh, keep on trending up. Um, fundamentally, I'm not too uh, fond of Apple, but the chart tells me otherwise. So that is just what I, uh, what I focus on. Uh, I did go long Tesla. Uh, I uh, bought a 50% position out of the close of the triangle. And this one here. So after this close, I got in for 50%, but then we retested it, retested it here again. Uh, so it took another 50% position. So I'm currently 100% long on, uh, on, uh, on Tesla. If I say 100% position, that means that if I lose, uh, if I take a full one hour loss on this trade, I have taken 100% of the amount I am willing to lose on a single trade. And that is 1% of my portfolio. So that is what a 100% position means. Um, so that is what I'm looking at for next week. See if this starts trending up. Um, let's go over Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not doing too much. Um, we're in a, uh, in a reverse triangle in a megaphone. Depends on how you look at it. Some people will call this a, a bull flag. Um, but flags do not move like this they don't extend diagonally uh, diagonally outwards um so i do definitely do not consider this to be a a bull flag but again you know to each his own if you consider this a bull flag trade it as a bull flag uh, and act as a uh, uh, act as if it would be a a bull flag um i was kind of getting bullish when we broke out of this structure here we have all these highs and then it does look like we start to break out of it. Uh, however, there's the potential resistance right here. So even if we would have broken out, it would, would have been a very, very short long trade to me. Um, the only reason for me to get really bullish on Bitcoin is if we break out of this megaphone structure entirely. Uh, until then, I'm just, I'm just looking, I'm just watching it and see if we can, uh, see if we can do something. Will I long the bottom of the megaphone? In almost all cases, I will not long previous support. I will long previous resistance simply because of the, the uh, general concept of previous resistance turning into support. I think that is one of the easiest and one of the most basic um, trading principles out there. And I think if you can stick to that, you will do you will do pretty good. Um, it's a good starting point. Buying previous support is, is something else. I mean, that would depend on many things. Um, like, like I said earlier, if it's a hammer on the weekly, you know, we get a, we get a huge weekly hammer and then price revisits uh, that particular point in, in, in time, uh, I don't know, six weeks later, then I will consider buying that. But not just because, you know, if this is support here and maybe here and maybe here, um, I won't. I won't just buy that blindly. I will not put the order in. I will be watching price action, and if bullish price action develops, um, I could. I could actually buy, but I won't set orders, uh, limit orders, uh, in advance. Um, 
Ethereum is looking more interesting to me, believe it or not, but uh, for a short position and not for a long position. We got the, um, first of all, we got the, the higher time frame channel here, uh, which is acting as support. Um, we got the 25 weekly moving average. The difference between the 200 day moving average and the 25, 50, 52 week, sorry, a moving average. Well, the name says it all, but um, they act as the yearly average. However, crypto trades 24 seven. So I will use the 52 week moving average as opposed to the 200 day moving average on traditional markets, which are obviously closed during the weekends. Um, I know for a fact that a lot of crypto traders use the 200 day moving average for uh, crypto as well, which is perfectly fine. It really doesn't matter, matter that much, even though they do differ. Um, it's all just a matter of, of what you, what you want to use. And there's, because there's plenty of people using the 200 day moving average, it is going to be a level two, uh, watch, but I just prefer to use uh, the 52 week. Um, so this is clearly, uh, this is, has turned into a resistance here, uh, broke support. And so the 52 week moving average is now acting as resistance, meaning this is, this is, this is bearish on the higher time frame. Um, the channel, the, um, the upper channel is still acting as support, but we keep touching the lower boundary of the channel. And that is usually not a, uh, a good sign. Um, we also broke out of this rectangle here. Uh, I actually shorted the retest of the rectangle, but I got stopped out somewhere along, um, along, uh, the, no, actually, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong on that. Sorry. I went long immediately after this steady close here, and then I got stopped out on this candle here. That was, uh, that was the trade I was in. Um, so what I'm going to be doing now is actually wait until we close through this low here, because that would mean we'd be below the 52 week moving average, we'd be below the uh, uh, channel, and we'd be below these lows here. Uh, so if we get a daily close under this uh, upward sloping trend line, uh, I will definitely be looking to position short um, all the way down here. I'm really sorry to uh, to have to say that, but I definitely look at, at Ethereum going back to 1500s, uh, which is a, uh, a pretty big drop, unfortunately. I mean, I do prefer being long, um, making money off of shorts just gives a different feeling. Uh, but yeah, you know, if that's the way the market moves, I'm going to be try uh, and uh, going along with that trend. Then we got Solana. Um, even though Solana is an is an altcoin, it's a, a pretty big one. Loads of people trade in. Um, it's cheap. It's fast. Uh, so I will be covering Solana pretty much every week. Uh, this is the way I'm looking at uh, Solana right now. Um, it's it's consolidating. It's not doing a whole lot. Um, if we close above. Uh, the trend line here that would definitely be bullish however it is still a diagonal line uh, meaning that diagonal lines are less trustworthy than horizontals apps they absolutely are uh, i know there are people who trade trend lines only but um if you just give a monkey a a pencil and a an hr and you let him draw again random trend lines he will be hitting a lot of levels that seem relevant. Uh, a lot of beginners use trend, use trend lines actually, again, because they're just easier to connect to different price points. Uh, and statistically, they just simply work less good than horizontal levels. So if we close above the trend line here, please do be aware of these horizontal resistance levels. They will be acting as resistance most likely. So if we get, if you get a daily close here, please don't go balls deep uh, a thousand times long unleveraged because you think we're going to go to new all time highs. Um, it would be it would be the first bullish sign in a long time uh, because we've been in this for uh, since March. Uh, however, we're definitely not out of the woods yet. And what worries me 
is the uh, $120 level, something around $120, not exactly $120. But look at the amount of interactions we've had here. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And yes, I do believe that if a level is interacted with more or more frequently, the chances of it breaking do increase. Um, and if $120 breaks, I'm, I'm definitely looking uh, to short it to this level here. This level is important to me because we get this huge thrust candle that closes through this structure here. Um, and it closes through previous support, uh, which is around here. But this is a break of market structure. Then we get the perfect retest of that level. It's just, it's, it's a, a significant level to me. It's also a round number, $80, which uh, tends to work well. Uh, not always, but definitely, uh, definitely often. Uh, so yeah, that is, uh, that is Solana on the lower time frames, which is one hour to four hours. Nothing really stands out to me. Nothing stands out to me at all. Um, it's, it's just boring price action. Um, you know, if we could break through this low here, um, we could potentially be looking at a bottoming structure here, but that is not, um, that is not the case right now. Uh, so on the short term, there are no trades for me here. If I, no, I was going to say I, I could short this level here, but there's just too many highs for it to make it a decent risk reward trade. Uh, what I mean by that is if I go short here, these are first trouble areas. These are highs that could immediately lead to resistance in a short position. Um, so the potential profit for me is, um, is not there, is not there at all. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Solana. Uh, looking at corn, I was actually in a corn trade and I, I do fuck this up <laughs> because I had the wrong chart. Um, I went, uh, I went long, let me close this, um, and I wanted to trade up until this level here, then uh, we got this daily uh, level, I was thinking, should I keep this trade open overnight, um, which costs more money, obviously, and just to get, squeeze a little more potential profit out of the trade, I decided to not do that, I did actually close uh, pretty much near the top for it to see it trend back down. However, then I went to the platform where I actually trade corn on and saw that this level here was way, way higher. Um, so yeah, that was a, uh, that was a mistake, but a mistake that uh, up until now seems to be uh, uh, the right decision. Uh, still looking at corn, because it could potentially be trending uh, um, somewhat higher. This is an interesting chart as well. Uh, Coco futures, a huge triangle, uh, ascending, uh, ascending triangle. Sorry, um, this has just been moving down. I actually went long on the break of this, um, the break out of this uh, trend line here. Uh, got a huge, huge breakout, but then it just, you know, it nuked all the way down, stopped out, unfortunately. And now we're looking at a potential breakdown uh, to the uh, to the downside. Uh, if this does break through this low here, the most extreme low, I'm definitely going to uh, to be short uh, because this could be a massive um, top structure. Uh, so this is definitely for next for next week. For next week, we have wheat as well. I am long wheat. I went long this level here. Um, I do like the way this chart looks. This is a nice bottoming structure. The only thing I really dislike about this chart is the weekly because we get the shooting star here. The shooting star on the weekly at this price is, is bearish to me. Um, so that is a, um, I'm, I'm not fully convinced on this trade yet, but I'll see how this plays out. I have a, uh, a tight stop loss. Um, if you consider this to be a bottoming structure, if you consider this to be a breakout, you don't want to see price close back down here on the daily too much. So you could be definitely working and should definitely be working with a with a tight stop loss. There are people who will say, well, I'm just going to use the last uh, swing low um, before the breakout. You could, but again, you don't. Again, if this is a bottoming structure on the daily and it 
breaks out, you don't want to see it all the way back down here. That doesn't make sense to me. Of course, you don't want to have a stop that's too tight, but the previous day low, it should not revisit it uh, in my mind or, or to me. So that is where my, uh, where my stop currently is. Uh, I am long silver as well. Um, got long on the breakout of this level here. Um, started to look really good last Friday. Started to look like we were, we were finally going to get the break uh, out, out of this uh, high, this high here. Uh, however, it just looks to be um, acting as resistance still. Um, I went for the most extreme high here to uh, to use as a um, as a level after which I would potentially add to the position. Uh, but these highs here are slightly lower than the most extreme high and are definitely acting as uh, as resistance right now. Uh, still in this, uh, definitely still in this, and we'll see what this trade does uh, the week ahead. Uh, and then we got coffee. Coffee is still something I'm looking at. Uh, the, uh, the rising wedge, waiting for it to break down. Um, until then, I am not doing anything. Just just wait, waiting and watching for it to uh, confirm uh, on the daily out of this uh, out of this channel. Uh, Nvidia also looking uh, looking interesting, uh, especially with the two hundred day moving average on there. As you can see, the channel combined with the moving average acting as um, as a support for Nvidia just in a continuous uptrend has been for a very long time one of the most obvious outperformers um, forming a triangle right now if we close above the triangle I will start to look for a uh, a long position hopefully target the high of the channel somewhere uh, but if we break down I will uh, I will start looking at a potential short because it's going to be the first time in a very long time. Uh, actually, no, the, 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 um, the moment we entered and cre started creating this channel, we haven't, we've never left the channel. Um, again, always keep in mind, plenty of people are going to look at this the exact same way. There's going to be bear traps, so always, always manage your risk uh, accordingly. Just because it breaks down out of this channel doesn't mean we're going to nuke straight down until... $50. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, again, you know, even if we break down, we got the um, horizontal level here, uh, which definitely could act as a new support. Then we have the swing low here that could potentially be the new support. And we got the swing low here that could potentially be new support. Uh, but these are definitely my take profit targets if we were to break down out of the channel. So that is also something I'm going to be looking at next week. Microsoft is a potential um, a head and shoulders. I've, I've posted about this on Twitter on X. Does anybody actually call it X? I don't know. I thought it was just going to be Twitter for the rest of eternity, but maybe I should call it X. Maybe I sound like a boomer if I call it Twitter. Uh, but this is a, um, a potential uh, head and shoulder topping formation. Uh, if we close down here, it's going to be a pretty, a pretty big short, which is going to hit the S&P 500 as well which will also influence crypto um, uh, in a bad way, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, these are the, uh, the trades I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking at or considering for next week. Um, crypto, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just not looking great. I don't see a lot of things I would like to see. Uh, last week was a, a different story entirely. Um, uh, however, just last week, things have changed, and um, they're not looking so not looking so great anymore. Um, B and B, you know, I posted about this again on on Twitter on X. There's a huge rectangle forming. Uh, we got the uh, inverse head and shoulder potentially here that was maybe breaking out. However, we're back down, so uh, that is most likely invalidated. If uh, if the rectangle does, um, uh, if we break out out of the, out of the rectangle, uh, get a confirmed breakout, it's going to be a, a huge, a huge long uh, with targets up to uh, $1,200. Um, 
say was looking pretty good actually that was one of the charts i did mark uh, we got the swing high here and then we have this again beautiful thrust candle closing through the highs uh, and i positioned long on the retest of the last high pre-breakout um, with a stop below this candle here so i am in this trade um again looking pretty good to me you could always ask you know but what about this daily closes below uh the 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 swing high you consider important which would be a fair question um uh but i, I don't consider support potential support broken down yet in fact i would consider the consider this a confirmation of uh of uh, the support of the level that i was interested in uh, if we start breaking down through these lows here the new lows we get daily closes below these uh, i will potentially just manually manually close the trade but up until then i will uh, i will just uh, hold on tight i'm also looking at tau tau is uh, one of the outperformers as well in crypto um looking at tau for a very short trade we got the uh, high here got the high here and we got this thrust candle closing through the highs here, this structure right over here. Uh, so I'm looking to long the last high pre-break. Of course, this is the actual last high pre-break. Um, but again, this is kind of a discretionary decision. What I do really dislike about this trade now is just a slow, um, the slow floating uh, into your level. I really, really prefer aggressive price action. The reason I will not cancel the order is because this price action could also be, or will, is also um, um, due to the fact that we are in the weekend, where again, volatility is lower due to lower volume. Uh, if this was during the week, I would have uh, pulled the order and I would not be interested anymore uh, because this could potentially be new resistance this could be new resistance um if i start to get long here uh, for now i'm going to keep the trade in and uh, see what we get that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it guys for me for uh, for crypto right now um a couple of charts were just looking really good you know try like pepe 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 was looking uh, was looking good kind of the same idea you know we got the swing high here closed through uh, the level uh, got the retest but now we're just drifting down uh, so not looking great render is a, a potential short to me or for me um we got this structure here uh looking to short the uh the retest from the from below uh, but again if I were to position short here, I will consider the fact that this could become new resistance uh, for my short position, meaning it's becoming less and less and less interesting. The longer, uh, the more time that passes, uh, the less interesting I'm gonna become in this uh, in this short. Uh, I have no orders in. I'm just watching uh, watching price action. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Tia is forming a rectangle which is interesting to me if we close above this above this level here definitely looking to to um position long uh, up until these highs but well, these are just charts i've, I've marked and i'm uh, looking to see how everything develops um so oh yeah i was uh, this is this is a mess up on my part as well wanted to position short on uh, on lido ldo uh, never put the order in um would have gotten a perfect entry um but yeah that's uh that's too bad shit like that does happen that also looked great you know we got the inverse head and shoulder bottoming formation broke down however we're just again floating down here back um uh, back below the neckline and if we start breaking up again i will definitely keep um fetch in mind i even forgot to mention one important trade i'm looking at which is cable dollar uh, pound dollar um we got the huge uh, rising wedge and we got the confirmed breakout out of the wedge so i want to be short on a retest of this level with a stop uh, on the previous day's high 
targeting these horizontal um, uh, levels. Uh, so this is also an important trade I'm, um, I'm watching for next week. We got to bounce pretty aggressively though to get to uh, almost 120 pips to, um, to get to my entry. But we'll see what the market uh, gives us. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for plowing through this with me, this hour of absolute psychological torture. Uh, I got to admit, it is not easy, but it will get better. It'll get easier once we get a few questions in, once we get chart requests in, once I smooth out the structure a little. Uh, I did break structure every now and then. To use a trading terminology, I am aware of that. Again, it's not easy, but I'll do my absolute best to get better at this every week. Um, I would really, really appreciate it if you could like or subscribe or comment or both, uh, all three, sorry. Uh, that would mean a lot. We got we to, gotta, you know, manipulate the algorithms where we can. Uh, really hope to see you back here next week, either on Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to try and do this every single week for, uh, for um, as long as I can. Uh, so thank you guys, appreciate it, wishing you a, uh, a good weekend and wishing you a, a great trading week ahead. See you next time.